have never desired your good opinion. People fear what they do not understand. I have a headache, a badge, and a gun. Power is yours. Behave. I was just trying to start a conversation. And share the wonders I've seen. Good morning, Magnofies, and welcome to The Wonders I've Seen, where there's no such thing as weird or normal, there's just different. I'm your host, Tanagra, and today we'll be discussing CW's Roswell, New Mexico. Racism, bisexuality, borders, murder, politics, and aliens. Yeah, I wasn't expecting all that either. So, my liquid nourishment for today is tea, Earl Grey, hot. Um, uh, Grab your own liquid nourishment, sit back and relax as I share the wonders. So if you haven't been watching CW's Roswell in New Mexico, let me give you a little bit of a breakdown on the show. This is based on Melinda Metz's Roswell High Young Adult Book Series. You might be familiar with the show title because um, CW, or maybe it was the WB back then, Lord, I've been watching this channel for uh, decades now. Um, first did an adaptation of the books in 1989 with Roswell, um, predominantly uh, run by the co-writer Jason Caddams. That one starred Sherry Appleby and Jason Bear, respectively, as Liz Parker and Max Evans. Basically, they were high school students, and the entire series was about how being a teenager and being in high school is like feeling like an alien in your own body. But then what if you actually are an alien? I know. I say it now very sarcastically, but at the time, I loved it. Um... I, I was in high school myself. Um, the idea of being an outsider was sort of something that I had always dealt with. Like I was very comfortable being an outsider. So I definitely got where the aliens were coming from. Like you make your own group, your own people, your own safe space. And then like you screw everybody else because like, meh, it's just high school. So I love the show. I watched it during its entire run, 1999 to, I believe it was 2002. Um, and it was, it was melodramatic, it was drama, it was teen drama, it was new adult drama before we even had the title new adult. It was excellent chemistry between the cast. It was storytelling, but it was also really, really, really white. And I'm not saying that New Mexico or Roswell, New Mexico specifically is the most diverse place, but it was really, really, really white. But at the time you were used to seeing that, especially in genre television. So you didn't really think about it. You were just like, huh, okay. Then, Dun dun dun. Karina Aldi McKenzie comes along, or fresh off of the originals, feeling highly politically active and wanting to be politically engaged and politically aware. And she pitches Roswell, New Mexico. So it's a bit different, but you still have a homage to the original 1999 series. And it stars Liz Ortecho and Max Evans. All right, those are the main characters, played by Janine Mason and Nathan Parsons. And while this version, or rather as they're billing it, the second adaptation of Metz's novels revolves around um, the love story of Liz and Max, similar to the first one. It's actually more of an ensemble cast. And I think that definitely works in favor of the show and with what McKenzie um, is trying to accomplish in the representation and, and using this story as an allegory for uh, Islamophobia, which she has said directly is Islamophobia. Uh, and But she's crouching it in the terms, which I think is uh, brilliant, of being American, of being um, descended from immigrants, uh, legal or illegal, um, the challenges that come with that. And then in a stroke of brilliance, having all the aliens be white. So... <laughs> The actual aliens that people not only like potentially should fear, because I mean, as far as they know, they have powers that they can't control yet, which I think is a very interesting um, is an interesting uh, switch to the original where these eighteen year olds who can control these these powers and like these uh, late people in their late twenties are like, I'm still figuring this shout, shit out, which is so so real because. I remember my late twenties and I was just then figuring my shit out um, that the aliens, the white aliens are the ones that nobody seems to think are a suspect. Um, 
So the three aliens, Max, Isabel, and Michael, are all white. And everybody else is a, a person of color, um, with the exception of Alex Maines and then his father, General Maines. And so it sort of plays on the idea of the... Oh, freaking... Um, my cat's vomiting. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> The kitten is soothed. He's okay. The vomit is cleaned up. The f- spot on the floor is disinfected. Let's continue with this podcast. Lords above. So, as I was saying, Max, Isabel, Michael, those are the aliens, and they are all white. I assume this was a, a choice that McKinsey made to play on the idea of the aliens not actually the aliens being the most accepted, um, you know, but at the same time actually being the aliens that people should be worrying about or who have actually come in illegally. And also a nice little contrast, we have uh, Liz's family who she is actually, well, she is an American um, by birth. Her, well, they don't really, I assume both of her parents, but they don't, they talk about her father a, a lot because her mother is not around. But so at least her father came over illegally and has started a business. And so they're constantly talking about the fear of ice showing up, which is something that I love. And they do this. This is something that runs through like the first couple of episodes. So they make a statement that like this is like the show is political and um, they're not even trying to shy away from it. The fact also that Liz's sister Rosa um, is implicated in the death of three girls and also including her own death. And then this sort of, you see how it plays into the justification of the brother of one of the girls who was killed in the same um, a car accident, uh, that he justifies his hate and his violence towards Liz and her father because like, oh, well, if you hadn't come over here legally, then she wouldn't die, which is pure bullshit. And I knew that I was going to like this show when um, Max in, I believe it's the second episode after somebody, uh, usually on the anniversary of the death of Rosa and the other two girls in the car accident happens there, somebody violently attacks the crash down um, that her father owns. And after this happens this year, after um, Liz has returned to Roswell after 10 years, She's talking to Max and like, why people do this? You know, how could you have so much hate? I lost my sister too. And Max is like, oh, it's just racism. Like, it's just pure racism. Like, he doesn't even like beat her on the butt. She doesn't be like, well, he's hurting. Oh, well, you know, he's dealing. No, 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 no. He's just like, it's racism. And I was like, I am here for this shit. I am here for like this lived in call out culture, dealing with like overt racism and microaggressions and we're not shying away from the R word, which people seem to think is so horrible. Like for clarification, the bad R word is rape and the accurate R word is racist. Use it. It's a word. It describes people, their beliefs and how they treat others. And that happened. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm here for this. Then they were talking about ice. Then they were talking like, I think, um, I believe it's episode three or four where Maria De Luca, also previously white, even though the actress herself was actually of uh, Latinx descent. Um, uh, but in this show, she's black, whether she's black Latinx, I haven't really gotten into, but she's black and she's talking about how her mom helped her, how when she was little, she thought they were the only black people in the world because there was nobody, like there weren't other black people in Roswell and how her mom helped her deal with that. I mean, this this show has such a lived in I've I've been there. I know people have been there feeling um, and I think it become it does come from um, McKinsey, from Karina Aldi McKinsey as the showrunner um, in several of her interviews. She's talked about being raised Muslim yet at the same time being raised Muslim, attending Muslim school or all her life yet at the same time, you know, having blonde hair and blue eyes and sort of that otherness that people don't associate you with who you are because of the way you look but at the same time when they're saying things about being muslim like you're like that's me and you're saying all this hate stuff stuff towards me and then you see me and you treat me like i'm white like that that dichotomy and that awareness of being other in a place where you quote unquote look like you belong it's very present and it doesn't feel like when they say things that they're checking off boxes of like well no look how woke we are well no look how where we are of me too 
like you don't get that feeling. Well, no, this is feminism, um, which is one of my biggest problems that I had with the new uh, Charmed series. Also, the fact that they said that they were going to be so aware and they weren't. And anyway, we'll n never speak of that series again. Um, but I also love the fact that they're older. Like, as I said at the beginning, when I was first watching Roswell, they were high schoolers. And that's the same time frame as the books are based on. And it was about um, being outside of your skin. This, they're older. I, I read a lot of romance novels. And one thing that I cannot stand in reading young adult uh, novels is the idea that 16 year olds are going to fall in love. And this is actually one reason why I stopped reading young adult. But they're going to fall in love and they say love and it means forever. And I'm like, boo boo, BBs, babies, you don't even know who you are. And while I think it's a very cute idea, um, I don't think it's realistic. I don't think it's not a story that I can get lost in because it's even in looking at it in a fantastical escapist way. You're a child when you're in high school, no matter what you've been through, you're a child. And if you've been through a lot of shit before high school or during high school, that just means that you're a child who's experienced trauma. Like you just, you have to age, you have to be live in your body, live in your skin, live in this world for a certain amount of time before you can really be definitive about who you are and what you want. And I say that to somebody who a lot of my core values haven't necessarily changed since I was younger. I was a highly opinionated youth. Um, but my understanding of them and how I treat other people and the importance I placed, placed on relationships and what I'm willing to deal with in relationships has changed and has matured as I've had more experience, as I've lived longer, as I've become more comfortable in my own skin and in loving myself. And that's something that you literally can only gain through time. And I like the fact that this story is now talking about these are adults who, so when they say I love you, they're not talking about it in this moment. Like this is something that will potentially play out into the rest of their lives. When the things that they're doing now, the professions that they have now define to a certain extent who they are. Isabel is this community, is this uh, community leader with, you know, happily, happily married, um, basically the picture perfect example of what you quote unquote should be as an attractive um, young professional, in some cases, white woman in, uh, in America. Um, Max is a police officer, which I thought was a stroke of brilliance. One, it makes sense for all the stuff that they could potentially do as aliens and he can hide it, but also just that if there's some way that he wants to help people or do anything, um, he can actually do it through the law, which is a very interesting play on the idea of abusing the law uh, for good rather than bad. But I think there's so much, there's so many bad cops in reality. I don't necessarily think that we need another another um, bad cop in a television show. And so I'm happy to let this representation of Max and of his um, co-worker and of his co-workers be a positive one, like by all means. Uh, and then we have Michael, who's very blue collar, um, works at a junkyard or as a mechanic. I can't tell if he's a trained mechanic or like that's just an alien skill. This like in some ways a quintessential uh, late 20 year old who had all these big plans and then they failed and they got stuck at home and they can't find a way out. And there's a lot that goes into that backstory, which thank you, thank you so much for making Michael much more complicated. Um, Cause there was always this layer of death that you never really got into. Um, but there's a lot that goes into how Michael got to where he is that you figure out. I am not going to give away any spoilers in this in this because I want you all to go out and watch. Um, but each of them represents like a different way to be an adult, a different way to do adulting, a different um, a different approach to becoming the person that they are meant to be. And because it is 10 years after after high school. So they're all in their late twenties, you know, pick a, a age range. I had people when I graduated who were between the ages of 17 and 19. So they're all between 27 and 29. And it makes the show have a lot more weight. I think that if you're going to do a show like this in this time, um, it needed to be done like this. I don't want aliens to talk about just being other, like you can't talk about otherness and not talk about 
the racial issues, the social issues, the political issues that the United States is going through right now. You can't ignore those. Like as much as you might want to be in a bubble, entertainment is not meant to be created like that. And I applaud um, Karina McKenzie for going to the CW and pitching the show. And I'm going to actually give the CW some credit for saying like, yeah, we should definitely do this. I'm not sure if this is what they were trying to do with some of their other shows. They've been doing a lot better with the representation. They started this whole campaign a couple of months ago about being diverse and CW having diversity. But I think one of the things that they lost in that campaign and they didn't realize that most of their diversity comes from backup characters, comes from secondary characters. And with the exception of a few shows like Black Lightning, which is ha, and like Roswell, which is ha also, CW hasn't been doing that great with their diverse representation as leads. And I mean this as POC as well as um, WOC. So I'm hoping that Roswell shows them and that the successful Roswell will show them that it's not just about throwing the the uh, token, <laughs> the, the token uh, show in there or the token person in there. It's about actually letting the show be about those issues, about their lives, um, about what they face on a daily basis. And Roswell does that beautifully. There's moments when Liz has called um, Michael out because he made a comparison about taking away her her Mexicanness and then taking away um, a part of being an alien. And she called him out for it. And it was a very it was a very like short moment, but it was a very direct and necessary conversation. And it didn't feel fake. It was just like your friends said something stupid and you're like, one, that was stupid. Two, that's not really accurate. And then you're like, you move on because that's just how you deal with these. You deal with these things on a day to day basis as a person of color, as a woman of color. Like it's not not every conversation or every moment of education is sitting down and having an hours long discussion. Let me explain to you why what you said is problematic. Like, no, F that. What you said was ignorant. It wasn't accurate. You can figure out on your own, go to the Googles and moving on with my life. And I really appreciated that moment. Um, and I was speaking to one of my friends who's actually white and she thought it was a great moment too. Like, yeah, she calls him out and like, that's it. She doesn't stress about it. She doesn't go through the emotional trauma and work of explaining it to him because every time a person of color has to explain something to a white person about racism, it is a level of emotional trauma and it is emotionally draining. Like it reminds you of all the shit that you've had to put up with in the past and you couldn't say anything. And then somebody's like, relive it to educate me when there is Google and Twitter. So I like the fact that they didn't make that her issue here. Um, I also really love the fact that there is a moment when Michael's, uh, excuse me, Max is talking to Liz and he says something and he's like, you mutter under your breath in Sp Spanish, like nobody can understand you. It's New Mexico, everybody speaks Spanish. And I just burst out laughing because I'm from Houston and I sort of have a very similar uh, approach to that. Like most people speak some level of Spanish. I mean, why why wouldn't they? This is the United States. Uh, in a couple of years, we have a predominantly Latinx population. Egg. I'm waiting if the world survives that long. And I just love the fact that he calls her out on it. And it's just like a statement of the reality that they live in. Um, like I said, the show feels very lived in. It feels very real. Even with the aspect of aliens, uh, it's a good balance between the mystery of the, the murder mystery element, which I'm not giving anything away that like is talked about at the beginning, but like the murder mystery element, the uh, government, issues which like the government is always an issue let's be real um the, the idea of becoming who you are and being an adult and being more secure than you are the idea of finding love or or is love that started when you were younger does it even survive through that that growth of be from a young an older child i'll say when you're 17 and 18 to becoming the adult that you're going to be um of dreams being crushed and what do you do after that of dealing with all this stuff, all this personal issues and emotional balance at the same time, trying to deal with the world at large. The show has done a really good job of balancing this thus far and it's 11 episodes in. And I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes from here. I appreciate the balance of 
the ensemble cast. And I think that's why they've been able to address so many issues, but also just the awareness and the knowledge of the showrunner and of the writers. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to see where this show goes. I hope it gets renewed. I haven't really been looking up if it gets renewed or not, because that usually upsets me and I just really want to enjoy it in the moment right now. Um, but I'm hoping it gets renewed. Um, Mackenzie has a five season plan and I want to see it play out. I like it when, when storytellers have a long game, they have an end game and you can see the work that's gone into it thus far. And I'm hoping that it uh, keeps going, it keeps growing, it keeps developing. So that I could say so much more about this show because they pack so much into every episode. And if you want to talk about it more, please hit me up on Twitter or send me an email. I will continue to talk about this. Uh, tweet at me when it's on air. I usually watch it the following day just due to my schedule. Unfortunately, I cannot watch it live, which I would love to. Um, but yeah, let me know. Do you think that the story, um, that the overall story of Roswell in New Mexico is good? Do you think that this is an actually well done uh, adaptation and uh, they don't call it an update, but an update of a of the alien human star cross lover romance. I do. I think it's done really well. Um, if the show gets cut off, I hope they make it into like graphic novels or something because I want to see what McKinsey, what else McKinsey had planned. I want to see what happens to these characters. I love the LGBTQ representation. I love the fact that Michael is very very, very bisexual. And like, there's no questioning it. And he's comfortable with it. And like, he, it's it's just a, a thing. And they're like, yeah, okay. Like, that's it. It's it's, it's just blah. It's nothing. And I, I love that. Um, I love the idea that um, Alex Maines is a vet, but he's a gay vet. He's a decorated vet. And I love the fact that he is the decorated vet not because he did something physical, but because of his mind. And I think for me, that was just like, that That just spoke to, I, like every time you hear about the military, you always hear about, oh yeah, he got the Purple Heart because he died in combat. And I hate the fact that that is what we glorify of our military, the people who are out there dying, because I don't think that you have to die or put your life on the line to serve your country. And I appreciate the fact that that's not how they view it in this show either. It's not about how violent you can be. And yes, you can be physical capable. And yes, you can go out and kill people. And right, but there's also other ways to protect and serve. And in this era of um, hacking and false information and all the Russia stuff, and yes, I am doing this episode and recording it after the Mueller investigation has come out, the idea that somebody can sit down at a computer and protect people's lives is so true. And I love the fact that they're highlighting that. This, this show hits on so many elements and makes so much commentary um, about our current state as a country and as people, and for me personally, as a woman of color. Um, I just, I'm really excited for it. I hope the CW recognizes that they have something that's special um, and that they support it and they allow it to grow and naturally find an audience. If you're hearing things crash in the background, I live in New York. Like, I have no other explanation. You'll probably hear a police siren coming by soon, too, because I live in New York, no matter where you are. I'm not in upstate. All right. Anyway, I have talked about this enough. I would talk about it more, um, but I should wrap up. So that's all the wonders that I have to share with you today. Continue this discussion with me, please, on some platform. You can find me on Twitter at Tanagra, G-G-N-O-C. That's at T-A-N-A-G-R-A-G-G-N-O-C. Or send me an email at G-G-N-O-C, Tanagra at gmail.com. That's G-G-N-O-C, T-A-N-A-G-R-A at gmail.com. Um, if you find me on Twitter, give me a follow. We can discuss on there. Send me an email. For all you Android users, you can find us on Anchor and Radio Public. And for all you iThings users, you can listen in on iTunes and Overcast. You can also listen to us while watching an awesome slideshow on YouTube. 
And if you do follow us on YouTube, that's right. Don't forget to follow, like, and also subscribe. So leave us a message on some platform. Tell us what you think. Live tweet at me. Uh, yeah, suggest a movie, suggest a show to watch. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you love Roswell as much as I do. I hope you go and watch the show. Give it a chance. Um, it's billed as a romance, but it is so much more than that. Make choices and don't follow it up. <laughs>